Hello everyone and welcome to this week's lecture on English 111 College Rhetoric. This week we're going to be talking about your final papers. You're, so you're almost done, you just have one more week to go. Now remember from a few weeks ago when I told you guys to start thinking about possible topics that you would want to explore for your final projects um, that you cannot write about a few subjects as they've been pretty much done to death and it's very difficult to find something new um, to say about these topics such as uh, gun control, abortion, the death penalty, the legalization of any drugs, particularly marijuana, or physician-assisted suicide. So. We are now at the point where you want to consider the process of creating a final argument. First of all, you'll want to consider the invention of your paper. That comes with, what do I want? Do I want to change my audience's mood, mind, or willingness to act on a particular topic or issue? That, of course, involves asking what kind of rhetoric you will need to employ to put your best foot forward. Do you want to rely on blaming a particular individual or group? This is usually told in the past tense and oftentimes um, is less persuasive because of course you can't do anything to change the past. Do you want your rhetoric to rely on values? This has to do with the present tense and when I say values I don't necessarily mean uh, things such as morality, a particular religious bent, but rather values that you might share with your audience um, such as at college students you might share you know hard work, um, achievement, uh, putting your best foot forward, that sort of thing. Or do you want to rely on offering your audience choices um, for future actions? This is often the most persuasive form of rhetoric because you can always do something about the future, whereas, of course, in the past or the present, um, attitudes and beliefs cannot necessarily be changed as easily. So after you have sort of brainstormed about what you want from your audience and how best to frame that argument, you'll want to think about what a potential opponent might say. Um, is the issue you're dealing with simple or complex? How will you break it down so that your audience can easily understand what your argument is? Again, what values does your audience share with you? And this is, of course, broadly speaking. How can you appeal to those values? It is, of course, very important to remember to represent all sides of the argument as fairly as possible. So, when actually constructing your argument, you're going to want to begin by establishing your character or ethos. Remember, these are the appeals that we've been talking about throughout the semester. semester. Ethos is generally reserved for the introduction. This is how you construct your argu argument to get your audience to like and trust you, because of course you're not going to be open um, or willing to listen to an argument if you don't trust the person who's speaking to you, or writing in this case. Do you exhibit good sense? Um, do you have any particular experience with this particular topic? If you do, then you'll definitely want to employ that in your introduction. Do you share your audience's values? And of course, do you show that their needs and or interests are being served by your argument? After you've established your character, you're then going to establish your facts. This is the meat of your argument. This is where all that research comes into play. Do you have the facts and figures to back up your claim? Are you representing all sides fairly? Are your sources up to date? Do they come from a variety of scholarly places? Remember to keep it simple and succinct. You only want to use the information um, at hand that keeps it in the frame that you are arguing. Any extra or tangential information can distract from the issue at hand and lead your audience astray. Finally, you're going to want to establish an emotional connection or pathos with your audience. This comes at the end of your argument, and you're going to want to paint a picture of what the future will look like if your audience does or does not adopt the choices you are offering as a solution to your particular issue. Remember that some of the emotions people usually employ uh, when making an argument could be humor. Now, humor, as Cicero said once, um, is certainly a persuasive emotion. However, it tends to relax an audience and doesn't really inspire them uh, to do anything about a particular issue. Anger and fear are usually the emotions employed to rouse an audience to action, as we can see already in the uh, heated political debates uh, surrounding us. 
Um, but of course, anger and fear, while it may initially rouse an audience to action, you want to get them to follow through. So you want to combine the play on those emotions uh, with hope, which inspires people. Um, people rarely just act um, for the sake of doing so. They want to be inspired to do so because it um, appeals to some greater good, whatever greater good you think um, is important in this matter. Now again, it's important to remember as you're constructing your rough drafts um, in your papers, you're you know continuing your research, um, that you must incorporate in your final product at least seven to ten sources, um, which must include scholarly journal articles and books. And again, remember these should be peer-reviewed sources, and each of those sources should be at least ten pages long, um, especially when you are reviewing your uh, journal sources. Um, also remember that textbooks and other reference materials do not count as scholarly resources as they are written in a general language that appeals to a general audience. <clears throat> Again, you want to appear um, as credible and trustworthy as possible, which of course includes the kind of research you are incorporating. Um, you may also, for your final projects, include one to two credible websites, reports, and or other scholarly materials like dissertations or government websites, um, things of that nature. It is imperative that you avoid at all costs Wikipedia, and I'm also not allowing any dot-coms or commercial websites for this final paper. So again, um, please stay away from these for, because any mention of them uh, will constitute a failing grade. Of course, also, you can always go back to the lecture materials from weeks five and six, um, which specifically talk about the research process. And again, when you're thinking about the research process, I know it can be long and frustrating, um, but one of the most important things to have uh, throughout this process in the next week or so is an open mind. If the materials that you find do not support your initial claims, you should be willing, you must be willing, actually, to, to go back and refine your, um, your claims. As always, if you have any questions, please feel free to email me or to post a discussion board. There is no password for this week's reading response. Have a great week.